Hey everybody, Steven here, and today I'm reviewing the R108 mechanical keyboard from ProtoArc and Royal. So this was co-created by those two companies and offers unique aesthetics that hopefully has top performance to match. Like all of my reviews, I'll cover the specs first, and then I'll go over what I like, don't like, and the gray area before wrapping the video up. With that being said, let's get into the specs. The R108 is a full keyboard design featuring 109 keys with Gateron SMD yellow mechanical linear switches that have a medium 50 gram actuation force, 3 pin plate mount, 2.0 millimeter pre-travel distance, 4.0 millimeter total travel distance, MX structure, and a 50 million click lifespan. The keycaps are double shot PBT that are high grade oil resistant with a unique font that comes in three different colors, the lava brown that I have in this video, whale blue, which I personally really like the look of, and starry cyan. The keycaps and switches are swappable also if you want to change them down the road with this supporting five and three pin switches for more compatibility. Before I continue with the rest of the specs though, let's do a quick sound test of the switches. This has a triple connection mode that includes USB Type-C, Bluetooth 5.0, and a 2.4 GHz wireless connection to a USB dongle. This can connect up to five devices, with the breakdown here being a wired connection, a 2.4 GHz connection, and three Bluetooth connections, with there being the option for Bluetooth 3.0 also, if you need it. This has a 4200 milliamp battery for 14 hours of use with the lights on and 350 hours of use with the lights off. The keyboard is hefty coming in at 1200 grams, which is roughly 2.6 pounds. The keyboard is 17 inches wide, 4.8 inches long, and has a height of 1.8 inches at the tallest point. This has an RGB backlight with 18 backlight modes you can adjust using just the keyboard and four more you can adjust using their app, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. I'll showcase an image from the ProtoArc website showing the construction of the keyboard, which I like to see these breakdowns to know what parts are inside. And speaking of that, inside of the box, you'll actually find the keyboard, USB Type-C charging cable, keycap and switch pullers, four replacement switches, and the user guide. You'll find the USB connection dongle on the right hand side also tucked away. It has its own spot, which is really nice to see. Last, the price is $89.99 and there are two other versions, the 98 key, which goes for $79.99 and the 68 key, which goes for $69.99. Moving on now, let's talk about what I like about this keyboard and the best place to start is performance, which for me has been solid. I haven't had any false key registers or input lag with great performance when gaming and typing. And that's for all of the connection modes with this, which this has a lot to offer. I like to see that. So performance has been solid across the board, plugged in with a USB type C cable, the 2.4 gigahertz dongle, or using this via Bluetooth. I actually wrote the script for this review using this keyboard and the comfort with the keys here is something I noticed immediately when I first unboxed it, but I thought it might go away over time, but it hasn't. These are really, really solid, comfortable keycaps here. So whatever coating they have used with the PBT here, that oil resistance that I mentioned earlier in the specs, it just feels really good. 
It has a softness I've had with other keyboards in the past, but without feeling like it somewhat grips the fingers like those other ones have been prone to. So between gaming and typing, I've been really impressed with the comfort and performance. The design here is really good with the color that I have, the lava brown, being something more unique that will best be suited for certain builds if you're concerned with the aesthetics of your PC matching. I would love to see the whale blue in person, which out of the three options is the one that I really like from the pictures that I've seen. The font here is different and for me is another highlight as it's more unique than other keyboards that I've used in the past. The input dial in the top right hand corner I initially thought was a media control dial, but this area offers a unique aesthetic to the keyboard and the Windows or Mac system switch is a nice touch, although I don't have a Mac to test this out on so I don't know how much changes when you do use this with a Mac. The lighting here is really good, providing the right amount of backlight and plenty of effects to choose from. You can change these using the function key or via the software. Using the function key method, you can access 18 of the 22 light options and the other four you'll need the software to access. I won't showcase all of these because it will be a lot to cover, but I'm impressed with the options and adjustments you can make to this. I've used more popular brand keyboards that only have a small handful of lighting effects to choose from, and this blows those out of the water in terms of customization. One thing it doesn't have though is ambient lighting or screen sampling with this to replicate the colors on your screen, but it's not something that I'm actually missing. I really do like those features on other keyboards, but I'm actually enjoying just the amount of customization you can do with this. So again, it's not something I'm actually missing here with the R108. Shifting gears now, let's talk about what I don't like with this keyboard, which I only have one thing that's truly a standout negative, and that's the software. I found with smaller brands, the software is typically not the best, and although this is better than other ones I've used with smaller brand keyboards in the past, it still needs some work and refinement. The software is harder to find on the ProtoArc website, which this is on par with all software it seems, but this also downloads from a Google Drive and it looks like something a scammer would send you when you're trying to download it. The software itself is slow right now and tends to freeze, which the performance here is just lacking, and the aesthetics of the app aren't the most important thing, but it could stand to get overhauled. I understand that this can be quite expensive, so first would be improving the performance and then hopefully down the road the looks get improved. With the software, you have some standout adjustments you can make, such as remapping keys, remapping the function keys, creating macros, creating up to three different profiles, and changing the lighting. Overall, the performance and the look here, it just feels like it's something from the early 2000s, so I'm really hoping the team fixes this in the coming months which I think they're going to do. I think this is gonna be one of those things if we just wait a little bit, they're really going to improve this with feedback from the community, which all the basic functions are there that I would find with other software. Again, we need performance improved because it's, it's freezing and it's not always pulling up. And again, the aesthetics could be improved, but I'd, I'd put that at the back of the list. Let's just get the performance really good here and then hopefully, like I said, refine this add certain things in here. And a good example would be that the battery indicator doesn't have a percentage on it or the ability to add it. It's just a bar that you have to interpret. It's kind of like the iPhone iOS 16 before they updated it. So with this, I think down the road, we're going to see this improved, but as this stands right now, it, it's lacking a lot of things and just that refinement and performance that I'm hoping we will see here in the next couple months. For the rest of the issues I could potentially see with this product, they weren't clear cut negatives and fell into a gray area instead, meaning these are things you may or may not care about. So let's shift over to that now. The first is the lack of a dedicated media control section here and a volume scroll wheel. With most full size gaming keyboards, you will find this feature and I personally prefer having this. Now, you have the function keys at the top here that allow you to control the media and volume, but dedicated keys are always a plus in my opinion. I know not everyone will want this feature and some actually may prefer not to have it over the function style keys with this product. 
there is a bit of a trade-off with the media keys not being on this keyboard though as where you would normally find them you have two keys i've not seen on other keyboards i've used which is a calculator and a sign out key i don't know how often i'll use the calculator key but the sign out key is a nice feature Next, the keyboard isn't adjustable because the base molding sits at an angle, so it can't go flat. It's actually stuck at that angle just because of how the molding is. I usually have my keyboards at an angle, but for those who like their keyboards to lay flat, this is going to be an issue. I always prefer having more options over less, so this is a feature I wish this had. Last, this thing is heavy. It's a little over 2.6 pounds, like I mentioned earlier, a large part of that is the bigger battery, but with this being Bluetooth, I imagine part of the selling point is being able to take this around and use the Bluetooth feature without needing to plug it into a computer. And the notion of moving around with this, even if it's within my own home, it just seems more daunting because of how heavy this is. I definitely don't see people hauling this around a lot if they bring their own keyboard to various locations for work because of the weight. If it's just going to be in one location, it's fine. And you may even like the heavier feel to it because it's definitely not gonna move anywhere because of just the weight. So if you're doing more intense gaming sessions, it's gonna stay right there. So there is a bit of a trade-off here. So you get the weight, it's not gonna move. And with that bigger battery, you get good hours with this, the 14 hours with the lights on. The bigger part here is the 350 hours with them off which i personally think is incredible so yeah maybe you can't travel with it but nice big battery with this it feels solid on your desk and it i like heavier things this is why i like the xbox elite 2 controller it just feels solid in my hands so again i prefer it but if you're gonna travel with it it may be something to think about it may be a keyboard that just you don't want to travel with it because of this weight so to wrap this video up, I really like what Proto Arc and Royal Axe have created with this keyboard, with it having great performance and aesthetics to match, and a package that won't break the bank. The quality here is matched with great value, and if you don't need the full keyboard, they have the 98 and 67 key keyboards for a great price as well. The one downside potentially being the software, but I think that's something that we're gonna see improved over time, like I said, with feedback from the community. So I don't think that's something that should deter you necessarily from getting this keyboard. Plus, if you don't need all those features with this, I didn't actually even need to boot up the software for a while. I can just use this keyboard without the need of the software. So it just depends on what your actual needs are going to be with this. Now, if you have any questions about this keyboard, let me know in the comment section and I'll make sure to answer that for you there. I'll have a link for this in the description if you wanna pick it up. And as always, thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, hit the like button for me. If you wanna to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button for me and I'll see you in the next video.